off here as well. Uh, there is me. All righty, let's get started. Welcome everybody to this week's Qvert Community Meeting. It is the 13th of March. Uh, I hope you're all doing particularly well. Um, we like to start our meetings by inviting anyone who um, is new or has introduced themselves to take the opportunity to introduce themselves to the community. Sounds like we don't have anyone new. In which case, let's go ahead and look at the 1.3 schedule. I should probably ask, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Excellent, okay. Thank you. All righty, so this is fresh out of the oven. Kubernetes will be released the 17th of April, the 1.30, um, and then our feature freeze is the 12th of June for a release in, what is that? The 3rd of July. Um, yeah, things to, be, things to be aware of. Uh, do we have any questions about the 1.3 release? And also now that it's early in the release, um, it, you know, if, if there are any problems that you can see like significant holidays, uh, now's the time to call them out. I just um, kept it a little. Uh, is the kubevirt release now uh, connected to Kubernetes release? Am I right? Or how it works? Sort of. It, um, so we run approximately, I think, is it 10 weeks or 12 weeks after the Kubernetes release? Uh -huh. Let's have a quick look. Uh, is this still it? So we need to run a bunch of test lanes against that release. And so we need to allow Kubernetes to release. And then we open up our tag and then start creating test lanes, create a um, beta branches, and then have a feature freeze. What is that? Two months later. Yeah, I got it. At least three weeks after that. Um, yeah, and I, I, when we moved to this cadence, um, I recall talking about potentially shrinking that. Um, but we, we may just end up being this kind of a uh, uh, trailing communities by roughly this um, for the foreseeable future. All right. I believe I updated our event CFP. So DevConf CZ has closed. Um, but if you're in North America, or interested in going to North America, the DevConf US has opened. Um, but let's start at the top. I need to get rid of that. We've got all things open in Raleigh, uh, container days in Germany, um, and then a bunch of KCDs that are still open, and then DevConf US, uh, which will be in August. So those are all still going. Um, and also next week, um, we've got I think there's seven people from the Kubert community who will be at KubeCon. Um, so if you are going to be at KubeCon, uh, we have a part-time booth, uh, which means we're in the afternoon hours only um, at the Project Pavilion. Um, and we also have a Contrib Fest, which is on the Friday afternoon, a maintainer talk and a keynote. Um, so yeah, if you are going to be there, by all means, drop by, say good day, and please come to our Contrib Fest. Um, we'll have some cool stuff to give away. And we've also got um, Daniel's presenting uh, in Lithuania in, when is that? May, DevOps Pro Europe. Um, uh, speaking of Kubernetes next week, I did wonder if we want to cancel this meeting next week, considering we will have a bunch of people there. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty hectic week. Uh, thoughts? Yeah, I think it makes sense. That's usual. There will be some Qubit office hours at KubeCon, isn't that? No, they're not doing. Not I mean, time. we have a we have our kiosk, 
Mm -hmm. so the office hours, I think, was just a pandemic thing. Um, and now that we've gone, we've moved to largely in-person attendances again, they don't seem to be running uh, the office hours anymore. It's a bit of a shame, but I don't make the rules. Um, another thing I wanted to raise, and I don't have this finalized yet, but um, uh, Qbert Summit, I've been trying to squeeze it between a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I'm looking at opening a CFP for that really soon. And I wondered if anyone knows of any reason not to have it on, at the end of June. So that's the 26th and 27th, or potentially on Tuesday or Wednesday, which would be the 25th, 26th of June. Now, um, a lot of places in the Northern Hemisphere seem to have school holidays at totally different times. Uh, so I recognize that this could be a difficult time, uh, which is why I'm asking the uh, collection of people present here if there's any problems with that. It'll be after our 1.3 feature freeze, but before the release itself. And I don't think it conflicts with any other major events at the time. I don't see anyone dissenting to that. So in which case, uh, next week, you uh, might see an email from me saying that the Qbert CFP is open. Uh, sorry, the Qbert Summit CFP is open. Um, All righty. So there's nothing on our open floor. Vladex put a question in here. So I think, Andre, that... I, I think I pronounce your name differently every time we, we have a meeting. H how do I say your name? Kvaps. I think we can, we can, uh, that's, yeah, that's nickname. Uh, you can, I think we can close it. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah probably nobody answered on that. I think we can close it right now. All right. Um, I'll, I'll leave that with you to close, potentially with a message as to why it's been closed. That sounds fair. Uh, once again, please. There was something. I heard you, Bradley. Um, I'll, I'll let you close it and you can put a message. Okay. Okay. I'll close. For posterity. Thank you. All right. Um, so that's it for our agenda open floor. As per usual, if you do have anything you wish to raise, um, we will come back to that. So um, add, add anything that you feel like you, you need to talk about. We've got a couple of pull requests. Um, I cannot remember this one. I can say something about it since I posted Please do. it. So, um... If you click on the issue link, uh, you'll see it's closed simply because it's very old. Um, but essentially what's happening is if you run the unit tests with Golang instead of via Bazel, then it's running it with the race detector enabled. And then it's failing due to a bunch of reasons. Um, I took a look at it. And the good news is it's only failing because the test case itself has the race condition. So it's not in the code that's built for the binary. Um, and essentially, I fixed most of them, except for the last one where it's sending on a closed channel because the unit test does wants to detect if the channel is closed. And since it's a write-only channel, the only way to do that really in Go currently is to write to the channel and see if it panics. Cool. Thank you for providing that context. Um, yeah, is anyone able to uh, look into this? Cool. Thank you. 
Thank you. Let me get a CC here. Thank you, Luna. And thank you for um, for raising this PR. Aurel, you're here. Did you want to talk to this? Hello, hello. Good to hello. be back. I was absent yeah. for almost two weeks. Um, so this PR is trying to refactor the pod eviction admitter unit tests. It is doing it because I want to add uh, the scheduler uh, support in follow-up PRs, and I wanted to make sure that I understand the unit tests and also that they are covering most of the scenarios. Um, if anyone could please have a look at this PR, I would appreciate it very much. Oh, by the way, um, two days ago, Federico's PR to create a, a generated a client go for uh, virtual machine instances and other uh, kubevert objects was merged. So this PR could have a follow-up PR to use the fake clients from the new client go and to make it even more explicit and more understandable without the usage of a uh, go mock. And it looks like Lubo's um, put his hand up to have a look at that. And you've got a comment from Vlad. Right, and I'm going to click on that. Those are our pull requests. Uh, a few things from the mailing list. Um, oh, I need to click on this, but Qvert Hyperconverged Cluster Operator version 1.11 has been released. So thank you very much and congratulations to the team behind that. Now, as Ed here is, so I think the next two things, I just wanted to call attention to a couple of the um, threads that you started, slash responded to, think about Mostly about deprecation stuff. If Eddie has his mic working today, is able to speak to these? Sorry. Is it... What, what? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> I wondered since you're here, um, if you would, I just wanted to bring attention to your two email threads. Uh, the first is feature lifecycle proposal. Um, if you wanted to say a quick something about that. Yes, I, I will just, I just wanted to try to finalize it. So I got a few after this message, I got a few feedbacks, but I really want to close this. It's like dragging for a, a long time already and it would be nice if we could uh, make sure we follow it in the next release um that's it if you so if you have any thoughts want to propose something uh, something to change there please do and i will answer any all the feedback that i got from in the last two days, I will answer them probably until tomorrow. Uh, 
All right. Um, and if if you've uh, got everything together and you're still looking for people that uh, to approve it, um, please ping me. Um, but don't go anywhere because you've also got the next one. Oh, this one. <laughs> Uh, this is like an attempt to, we would like, this is an, also an old thing that we wanted to to deprecate uh, something that existed from the beginning of time of covert, which is the slurp uh, binding. We think that uh, no one is really using it. I would be really surprised if someone is using it. But uh, so that's why I think it's it will it's a nice candidate for an exception in this sense. Uh, and we um, if we just want to get rid of it and make sure that uh, no one will uh, by any by mistake will start using it again or or we not need to think about uh, all kind of quirks or things that uh, are needed and related to it there is a there, there are alternative to to it so if someone i don't know if someone uses here slurp but there are currently alternative for it the most uh, straightforward one is the is is another binding called past which is basically a next generation of the slurp and uh, and the other thing is the the old uh, old thing that uh, we currently have as default in covert is the bridge binding which is not exactly the same but uh, it will work so that's and masquerade we also have masquerade binding but in general if someone wants something that is very very similar to slurp he should go with past i guess i think i wrote that the alternative there and uh, there is also an alternative that if someone really, really wants to keep on using this old, old guy around and drag it, then they, they there is a plugin and a binding plugin that implements it. So they could conf change the configuration of the of their VMs or VMIs to use the plugin. It's also referenced in that message. Um, thanks for that. Is there anything that you want anyone to do? Or is it mostly just like, uh, hey, just let you know that this is happening. Prepare thyself. Yeah, the only feedback that I, if, if someone like sees this, uh, sees a problem because he's using it, he, she, sorry, are using it, then please feedback back and we can discuss it. I, let's say that's the only thing that I, there was some feedback, a small feedback, I think, on it, but uh, like, what will be the behavior of, if uh, an old VM has this configured? What will happen after the upgrade? So that's the only thing that uh, that I saw was feedback. But if you guys, anyone has a concern, then please and respond to that message. And from the maintainers, I will really help. Uh, it will really help if they will approve it. <laughs> but that we can take a little uh, offline as well. I'd like to that just to ask uh, this Slurp plugin, this Slurp uh, binding method was introducing some specific spec for specifying ports and uh, source tar source ports and target ports, if I remember it correctly. This also will be removed, isn't that? Binding itself is removed, so I don't know. It goes everything goes out, yes. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, uh, I think it has the same features. For example, the past binding has the same features. No, no, no. So, I mean, I mean the core spec of a virtual machine right now. Uh, it has some spec for adding slip interfaces. This spec allows you to specify ports. Uh, will this feature be removed as well? 
where do where where do you see it in the VM VM template spec? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember to be honest. Um, right. I, I think the only, that... I think the only thing that it has, if I'm not mistaken, it has the. If you are talking about the ports, what I remember is that under the interfaces you have a field called ports, and you can set mm -hmm. the ports. But that will not be removed. That's that's used also for other bindings. For uh, for which ones? Is it used for something else, not not just for this loop? Yes, the ports. Sure, so I think it's it's used for uh, for masquerade, for example, and for uh, for past. Yeah, right. I just didn't use them. <laughs> Get it? Thank you. Yes, if you don't use them, they they forward everything. Mm -hmm. Except maybe the thing that it is not forwarding is if you have Istio, for example, then uh, then it will not forward the, the, the ports that Istio is using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool beans. Our, our bug scrub, we have one from last week that I wanted to bring back because it, um, it missed. It is mostly um Fixing some spelling. Um, oh, let's just see if anyone's had a look at it. I love it. Um, but Kubert Kubert is not my reader. So uh, if anyone else is able to look into it, um, as I said, it's mostly some mistakes. It's all spelling mistakes. Um, mostly comments, but there are a couple of um, Unicode fixes. It's, it's it's quite light on, um, so I don't think reviewing this will um, add too much to anyone's current workload. That helps sweeten the deal. Uh, I can I take a look here. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Felix. All right. Um, I don't think Daniel's here. I was hoping he would be. Um, so this is something that he brought up a little while ago. Um, noticing that a lot of the copyright devices are a little bit everywhere and maybe we should have as a community a practice of including copyright notices, um, which is by the Qubit authors, the collective organization. Um, and so he has been following up on the Red Hat side of things with regards to changing what is currently copyright to Red Hat um, or variations on that to change it to uh, Qubit Copyright Qubert authors, I think, is the suggestion. Um, yeah, so I just want to bring this up with anyone. Uh, so, yeah, if you are adding files, you are adding the um, license, um, the new practice is to include Qubert authors rather than whatever company. Um, and then if you work for one of the companies of uh, IBM or NVIDIA, um, which I'm not sure if we have anyone from them today, um, yeah, we, we can um, try and follow up with them to uh, get permission for them to change their copyright as well uh, to Qubit authors. All right. Got a couple more bugs to go through. What's going to Mm, yeah. uh, keep the keep the cuddle, roll out, restart, DS bird handle it in Qubit namespace. Isn't restarting what? Seems problematic. Um, is it... anyone able to help out this contributor?
Yeah, hi. Uh, you can assign me to that. I remember I will be with it. Thank you, Igor. Sure. If you're wondering what I, why I keep doing this, I um, I lowered my monitor for ergonomic reasons, and now <laughs> my laptop overlaps a significant portion of my screen. Uh, I need it for calls. Uh, I'm still um, figuring out what that is. Show that no one's answered this already. Yeah, it's not there. So image upload. Yeah. It is throwing an error. Unexpected return value Are 500. I am just going to mute you. Uh, did I see someone from storage in here? You can tag me. How wonderful. Thank you, Alex. And one more. This is from the user guide. Um, I was wondering if anyone on this call is familiar with uh, Numa enough to be able to um, add some of this additional information to our Numa documentation, or whether this makes sense to add to our Numa documentation, I should say. So I guess, first off, um, is anyone here uh, SME on Numa and is able to say like, yes, yes, this would be good information to add to our documentation? No one. I presume that we're all scrambling to unmute. Um, so I, I struggle to believe that this meeting of great minds uh, isn't able to tell me whether or not um, this is a enhancement to our docs or not. It can be, but uh, I don't currently I don't have the capacity to validate whether this enhancement is needed. Uh, we can ask the third person to open pull request to enhance the implementation of it. Sounds like a plan. All right, I'm gonna leave that open for me. We can ask if he's willing to contribute to the, to the documentation. Good idea, and no new flake tests. All right. Uh, no one has added anything to the agenda or the open floor, um, which in case we will finish in just a minute. Um, unless anyone has anything that they would like to um, bring up, ask, comment on before we finish up today.
All righty. Well, to those who are traveling to KubeCon um, in the next couple of days, I hope you travel safely. And we, a reminder, we will cancel next week's meeting because of that. So we will see you in two weeks' time. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And be good and be safe until then. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, thank you.